As you know, Varian invests across the full stack. And as Sam started to allude to, I specifically focus a lot on infrastructure and what it can enable at the application layer. Along those lines, one area that we've been really excited by recently have been advancements in zero-knowledge cryptography, and specifically, what types of net new things they enable on-chain. So that's what my talk today will be about. Why now, and what we're looking forward to within the realm of ZK-enabled apps. But before we dive in too fast, let's take a moment to look at zero-knowledge cryptography in the context of computing history more broadly. Major computing breakthroughs tend to come in pairs. So there was the PC and the internet, and then cloud and mobile. In each case, each successive breakthrough tended to extend the capabilities and surface area of the one prior. So with PCs and the internet, the internet made it possible for all of the PCs to talk to all of the other PCs. For cloud and mobile, mobile made it possible for anyone to access the cloud anywhere at any time in the palm of their hand. Whenever we saw these intersections of major computing breakthroughs, they tended to lead to a bunch of net new things for developers to build. They created new superpowers and led to a Cambrian explosion of applications. So in the case of PCs and the internet, we got apps like Google, Yahoo, eBay, and Amazon. With cloud and mobile, we got applications like Uber, DoorDash, Snapchat, Maps, and much, much more. We think this same coupling phenomenon is happening now, again, with smart contract blockchains and zero-knowledge cryptography. That's really exciting. So you might ask, how do we actually know that this is the beginning of a true coupling? Well, whenever these couplets have occurred in the past, the first breakthrough has tended to precede the second by roughly five to 10 years. So PCs were the 80s, the internet was the 90s. Cloud was the early 2000s, and mobile was the late aughts and early 2010s. Well, smart contract blockchains like Ethereum in emerged in earnest roughly five to 10 years ago. And we're just now starting to see the true commercialization and maturization of zero-knowledge cryptography. And just as with prior computing couplets, we think that the combination and convergence of these two technologies will lead to a step function unlock in terms of what application developers can build on chain. Now, that's a little bit of, a little bit of the why now and we're, why we're starting to get excited about this. But I recognize many people in the audience may be asking, what actually is ZK and why should I care? Zero knowledge, AKA ZK, as I've been referring to it, means proving the validity of a statement without revealing the statement itself. Now, I'll be honest, the first, second, and honestly even fifth time I heard that, I found it really confusing. It's not super easy to grasp. So one mental model for thinking about why this matters is basically the difference between recomputing an entire problem set to check the answers versus just using an answer key to prove that somebody got the correct answers. The latter is simply more efficient. It also creates a menu of options for what the person who solved the problem set can choose to reveal, such as the prompts that they were solving for or some of the computation and work that went into their solutions. You can basically think of ZK as the answer key. It's a way to prove that somebody got the correct outputs and perform the computation correctly without needing to know unnecessary information. In the context of blockchains, this enables three new superpowers for developers. So first, the ability to leverage verifiable off-chain computation, which basically just means computation in off-chain servers that does not break any of the trust assumptions of blockchains. Second, the ability to provably access historical on-chain data. And third, the ability to selectively share information. Now, these are really important, and I realize the talk may be moving a little bit fast right now, so don't worry. I'll go through each in quite a lot more detail. So the first one is the ability to leverage verifiable off-chain computation. The way that developers work today is with entirely on-chain computation because off-chain servers are really opaque and it's not possible to prove in any sort of efficient manner that the computation run in those servers is correct. 
The result, though, is that entirely on-chain computation is really slow and really expensive. As a consequence, it's not possible to run complex logic on-chain, therefore limiting the expressivity of what application developers can build. We get more simplistic and more bare bones types of applications. Zero knowledge changes that. It makes it possible to prove that computation in off-chain servers was run correctly, thereby, in essence, making the off-chain environment an extension of the environment on-chain. Phrased differently, in this case, zero knowledge cryptography extends the capabilities and surface area of smart contract blockchains, a true computing couplet. So, why does this actually matter? And what are some of the net new types of things that developers can build on chain? Well, one example is consider all of the sort of public data that lives on blockchains about what users do and what wallet addresses are transacting across multiple types of applications. You could have a third party application, like an NFT lending protocol, that is looking to target and retain really high value users. One way that they might identify these users that are high value for them is to look at the subset of users that are buying a lot of NFTs on OpenSea and simultaneously engaging frequently in other types of lending environments like Compound or Aave. What this NFT lending protocol can do with access to zero knowledge cryptography is run a dynamic rewards program where they reward those users that they see as really high value in a sort of positive some way based on what those users are doing elsewhere on chain. This isn't possible in web two because all application data lives in silos. So Twitter isn't supposed to know what I'm Googling or you know, at least they claim that they don't know. And then today in crypto, this hasn't really been possible because it's simply too expensive to do entirely on chain. Only with the true combination of zero knowledge cryptography and smart contract blockchains can we start to get this positive sum, more interesting, expressive, and innovative application layer. So that's the first superpower that zero knowledge gives smart contract developers. The second is the ability to provably access historical on-chain data. Consider, again, something like a lending protocol. And I use the example of lending protocols here because lending is a really large market. What lending protocols might want to do today is customize individual loan rates based on a user's history of repayments or the quality of their collateral. The way that this might happen today is a centralized party off-chain creates a machine learning model where they independently have to pull all of the inputs about each user's history and data, create some sort of model with weightings, and then take the output of that and put it back on chain in the form of a rate for that individual user. The problem though, is that this is a sort of just trust me scenario. It's not possible to check that what those parties that are creating the rates are running is actually correct. Zero knowledge, again, changes this. It makes it possible to prove that the historical data is being indexed correctly so that you know the model isn't biased. It also makes it possible to check things like the computational correctness of those models such that users can feel more safety and security when they're engaging on chain. The result is a safer and more secure environment for users to put large amounts of money at stake or start to get, again, more expressivity in terms of the parameters that they can engage with within the lending protocols. Lending protocols are just one example. I'll pause it here without going into too many more examples, but if you do want to hear more examples, feel free to find me after the talk. I love talking about movie tickets and Marvel and sort of all of the things you can build with access to historical on-chain data. So those are the first two superpowers. The third is the ability to selectively share information. And I'll be honest, this is probably the one that I'm the most excited by because it's truly net new things that you can't do without zero knowledge or smart contract blockchains. So consider the realm of digital identity. Worldcoin, one of our portfolio companies, uses zero knowledge cryptography to let humans prove that they're human online without revealing any unnecessary information about themselves like what their name is, where they live, their date of birth, or anything else. It's a programmably private way to establish credibility about who you are or one subset of who you are without revealing unnecessary information. 
Another example of where zero-knowledge cryptography is really important for digital identity is with persistent pseudonymous names online. Persona Labs, another one of our recent portfolio companies, has been working on this and trying to establish credibility that you can tie to screen names. So think about any time that you see somebody, say, on crypto Twitter, posting trades and saying, I'm an influencer, you should follow me. You can't actually go and check that they're doing a lot of things on chain or that they have the credibility to back up what they're claiming. Persona Labs is working on making this possible using zero knowledge proofs to prove that you have the credibility to back up your arguments. One prototype that they built for, for an actual application use case of this was within the Nouns NFT community. So people engaging in discourse within Nouns and within governance could prove that they owned a Noun, i.e. had some sort of stake in the game, without revealing which Noun they owned or what their wallet address was. It was a programmably private way to show you had credibility again, without revealing unnecessary information that could expose you to, say, targeted security attacks. This is really powerful when you think about it, and when you think about all of the different ways in which we're going to engage online in the future. So questions like, am I interacting with a human or a bot are going to become increasingly important. Same with questions about why should I believe the information that is being presented to me, or why should I believe what this account has to say. Zero knowledge cryptography makes it possible to establish this credibility online in programmably private ways, both, again, within the world of blockchains and well beyond the world of blockchains. So again, those are sort of the three superpowers that zero knowledge enables for application developers on chain. But many of you in the room have been in crypto for a number of years now and are probably saying, What's actually different this time? You know, I've heard the phrase zero knowledge cryptography before. Are we at a true inflection point in terms of what's possible to build? We asked ourselves this same question. The answer was a resounding yes. This time is different and it's a true inflection point. We have the data to back it up. So zero knowledge cryptography is really beginning to commercialize. Proving speeds over the past five or so years have improved two to 3,000 times, and proven costs have declined by over fivefold. The result is that application teams, which may be smaller or have smaller budgets, can start to leverage this technology without breaking the bank. That it's faster now to prove these systems also means that it doesn't create sort of a hindrance in the user experience when you're starting to leverage this technology. So this time really is different. Now, I also recognize that there are probably a lot of different ways to invest in zero knowledge technology. So there have been tens to maybe even hundreds of millions that have flowed into things like hardware optimization or more academic pursuits like working on the underlying circuitry. That's been really great for advancing the space and it's done a lot in regards to things like improving proving speeds and improving the costs associated with zero knowledge. But our perspective is that over time, this will probably commoditize. What we're really focused on is the application layer and net new things to do at the application layer. So we've been actively investing against this thesis. I mentioned WorldCoin and Persona Labs, two of our portfolio companies that we're really excited about. Another one is called Pluto, which is making zero knowledge accessible for all developers on chain. They're building what we internally call the Stripe for ZK, with just five lines of code, application developers can start to leverage this technology without needing to know all of the underlying circuitry or mathematics. We also recently made an investment in a company called Modulus Labs, which is working on the specific intersection of zero knowledge and machine learning, in essence, making it possible to prove that computation run in machine learning models was run correctly thereby making it possible for AI agents to act as extensions of smart contract logic. These are just some of the areas that we've been excited by recently. And if we're correct that it really is the beginning of a true computing couplet, we think this is just the early innings. There's a lot more to look forward to and we'll be actively investing within this realm. Thank you so much. And if you have questions, feel free to find me during one of the breaks.